leadership for me um, and how I approach it is I want to be sure that I'm leading by the example. Correct. That I want to make sure that uh, the staff knows I'm not asking them to do anything that I'm not willing to yes. do yes. or that I have not done in the past. Right. Exactly. That's and, awesome. and I think setting that is really important. I, I'm not necessarily one that's going to come, you know, barking orders or saying, get this done now, 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 now. Uh, a little more, you know, try and be, you know, try and be, try and be building and educate. Right. Um, but also try, trying to lead by that example. Welcome to the Nicholas Brown Podcast, a podcast talk show about real estate investing, business leadership, and personal development. Each week, we explore current real-life case studies about how to build financial independence through investing in real estate to build your personal portfolio through passive income models, along with interviews from the top business leaders and personal development leaders. Now, here's your host, Nicholas Brown. Welcome to the show, everyone. I got another episode. It's going to deal with your personal development and your finances, ladies and gentlemen. I know this person is true because we just said time is money. So I'm going to read, I'm going to read off this information and we're going to get deep into it because he's unique. He's one of the top CPAs on there. Make sure you guys, before I begin, make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel where you get more information such as this, where you can learn more and reach out to people like-minded such as this person I have here. And make sure on the podcast channel, make sure you subscribe to the podcast channel so you can get alerts. So at, at the time, I look forward to seeing this professional come back to another episode, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read the about section, and we're going to get right into it. As he said, time is money. He's going to explain that. So... Today's guest is Neil Denman. Neil is a co-partner of Denman Hamilton and Associates CPA PLLC. Neil is one of the top CPA professionals that tailors unique strategies for maximizing bottom line profits and reducing tax liabilities and risk in your business. For more information, reach out to Neil and his team at www dhacpa.com i'm going to repeat that www.dhacpa.com welcome to the show neil well thank you very much for having me today oh man i'm excited for you ladies as we're recording this, this is during the tax season but as other professionals such as neil you do your taxes year-round you take care of you stay on top of your taxes year-round am i correct Neil? Yeah, that's a real big part of the overall planning strategy. If you really want to be proactive, you can't wait until, you know, right now and think, man, what did I do last year? What can you do for me? That's right. Staying on top of the taxes, that's that's the proactive. That's where you can really get a lot of value add is by staying on top of that throughout the course of the year. That's awesome. That's awesome. So as I say, Neil, so I can get the listeners and people that's watching, we focus on three things. We motivate, teach, which I'm going to say what inspired you, that's going to lead to the question, what, what inspired you, motivated you to move, something inspired and motivate you. So we motivate, teach, and get your perspective on your field and what's going on. So, Neil, what, what inspired you to become a CPA in your field? You know, it's, it's really a, a little bit of a journey, you know, and, okay. and the first part of the journey is not real exciting. You know, <laughs> okay. I you know, went to college a, a long time ago. And they said, what are you going to be when you grow up? Because you had to tell them something. And I said, I'll, I'll do an accountant. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I signed up and that's what I did. Wow. And that part of the story is not real, not real inspiring or motivating, I know. But it's kind of how it evolves throughout time. Okay. Uh, because, you know, d different people have different career paths. Maybe they change careers midway. And a lot can be said for changing the way that you do your accounting practice, you know, part of the way through your career, which is what we did. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, I always had the the vision um, when I when I first started my own practice of okay. I, I want to be able to sit down with people and and talk about their stuff and be strategic and plan. You know, I always would say want to think, hey man, this business owners come in, we've taken care of their monthly stuff. Let's be playing on what's next. Let's talk about what they've done. Let's look at their budgets. Let's look at their planning. And so much of that was not what the industry was. Really? Okay. Yeah. You know, it's it's a lot of what people stereotype it as. It's a bunch of people working as fast as they can to do tax turns day in, day out, 
day in and day out as, as quick as possible. And there's no real value to that. That's that could be a real commoditized service. That's the key word, value. 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 Right. And you're not robotic, ladies and gentlemen. So that's it's where, where it stood out. He's st st strategic. Everyone's situation is not the same, correct? Correct. You know, just because you saw something on the internet or your brother-in-law did it or your next door neighbor doesn't mean it's a real good fit for you. And it could actually be detrimental to what you're doing. So everyone's situation is 100% unique, whether it's in the real estate profession, whether it's in you know, uh, the insurance profession or anything else, it's everyone's unique. Okay. And that's another point that we're making, which was getting straight to the points, which I appreciate your time, Neil, which like sure. I said, I need you on another episode so we can go more specific on a certain topics, especially I deal with the business owners, which my uh, podcast and the show deals with personal development, business leadership, and real estate investing which you tie into all three of those because you're a leader you you have people under you correct we do we've got eight people here wow and they, okay they range okay. In, in age from everything well, i'm gonna call kids which are you know 23 24 up to about 55 <laughs> so it varies it, it varies yeah right right the leadership techniques varies would you agree everyone's oh, situation how you reach someone in your team just varies correct totally totally <laughs> totally different totally different <laughs> right right so back back on there. So who's your ideal client for long term? Because yeah. this is what I want to want to focus, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think you guys don't realize that this is not just tax preparation. He's a certified public accountant, so he has to be unique with your situation. But he can be flexible, which I'm sure as I stress that. So what is your what's your ideal client? Yeah, we could really break down to long term because you want to build long-term relationships right. with people. What is your long-term, most perfect, ideal client looks like? Okay. And we, we can break it down to be a, a business owner okay. whose business is doing at least $750,000 of revenue per year. Okay. And they are wanting additional strategic financial services. And that may be somebody that does not have the resources to hire a full-time internal CFO. Uh, or maybe they're just using their accountant as an after-the-fact tax preparer. We're looking for someone 750 or above that's looking for long-term strategic planning. That could be cash flow management. That could be budgeting. That could be business decisions. That could be financing options, uh, new business opportunities. Anything that fall into that is we're looking to establish long-term monthly recurring relationships with people that fall in that category. Okay. That's a good question that stands out. For me and you, we're going to build our relationship. I look forward to building a relationship with you. Being I'm a real estate investor, I deal with cash flow and turnkey properties like Airbnb or midterm uh, deals and wholesaling. You deal with people such as myself also, right? All the time. Okay, awesome, awesome. So when these ladies and gentlemen, we see it, CFO, you can structure it where I, you can pay. I can send you information where you pay myself a uh, a fee right cfo that's what chief financial yeah office. so i yeah. track my i don't have to touch my taxes where you you sit yeah we help in a, in a lot of different you areas structure Number, it that way rather yeah you tailor that's my point we're, we're tailor, tailor it to you because you know depending on where you are and, and someone that's at 750 in revenue may they may be different than someone's at 2 million correct but but what we're doing is is we're working through everybody every month with them gotcha we're, we're having monthly meetings we're saying Man, what what did you do this month? Why did you do it this way? You know, sure. you know, we need to consult and be strategic about this. Hey, you've had a big sale, you've had a big refinance. You know, what's that going to do to your tax position? How does it impact your cash flow? Uh, those are the things we're we're working through with people every month. That's awesome. That's awesome. So if I had three to four different types of LLC structures, all corporate S corporation, whatever, that's where we're meeting for the structure correctly. Correct. We're figuring out how, how it needs structured and, and how is this structure uh, working each month for you? You know, because you may have different, you may have, uh, you know, mid to short term rentals in one, you may have flips in one, you may have lease options in another from, from a real estate perspective. And all those are a little bit, all those are a little bit different. Right. Um, you know, and we need to be sure we're structuring it so um, you're getting the most benefit from each of those different business options. That's awesome. Let's appreciate. So give us some tips or what can you teach? What's the, what is something you advise for people 
that you always see FAQ, frequently asked question or situation, someone 750 above compared to 2 million plus. What is something you could teach or you advise them to do when they meet a professional such as yourself? Well, I think the, the first thing to know um, that we want to let, have them talk to them about is, do you understand what your business structure is and why you're doing it? Uh, because believe it or not, a lot of people don't actually know why they've got two LLCs and an S corporation. Right, or, right. You know, an right. S corporation and a C corporation and a sole proprietor. Right. Because they want to understand and make sure they know what they have and, and why they have it. Because a lot of people don't know. Um, they said, well, you know, I did that 10 years ago and that's just what I've done. Well, you've probably changed in 10 years. Right, right, you know, right. Business has grown. The environment's different. Um, it's just different. So does that situation even make sense for you? So I think that's the most important thing is really understanding your business structure. The other thing I think is really important if we want to step back to a tax perspective for a second, because it is tax season. Sure, sure. Is, is you've got to be proactive and you, you can't wait till December 30th and say, oh, what can I do for the past year? Um, there's not a lot you can necessarily do to scramble around on December 30th, December right. 31st. But if you're working throughout the entire year, we can help with a lot of a lot of things um, and educating people about that tax planning process throughout the, the course of the year. Does the tax planning is the proactive part that adds value? Here's the question then. Are you nationwide? Are you yes, we are. We've got. OK, great, great. We've got clients um, probably in about 32 states, 33 states. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because I know that your your home base is in Arkansas, correct? It's in Arkansas. Little, okay, yeah. So that's why I was asking all you nationwide because of the listeners or whatever. But if you look at the you know the past two years, the world's really changed. Yes, yes. You know, and you know, video conferencing, while it was you know accepted two years ago, it's really become the norm. Uh, so a lot right. of the clients that are even here in town that we were seeing face to face. We do a lot of our meetings via Zoom because they're saving 30, 45 minutes of drive time, and so are we. That's um, right. Just become a little bit more efficient for everybody. That's right. Right. And you can do more and, and communicate more ways and just check off. Like me and you communicate now. Yeah. Same same structure as your ongoing meetings with your clients? It's same sometimes... structure. Okay. So that's why I was nationwide. You hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Yep. Okay. We so do it all, all online. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to test you. Uh -oh. I just want I just want your perspective. I don't, All right. No that deal with leadership. You are a leader, especially what's going on today as we play this, the worldwide leaders and the mindset. You got some that are pushy, hint, hint, and you got some that'll pull, that'll gravitize you to want to do business or want to be on their team. I'll follow you, Neil. What is your what is your what is leadership to you? Uh, I think is for leadership for me um, and how I approach it is I want to be sure that I'm leading by the example. Correct. That I want to make sure that uh, the staff knows I'm not asking them to do anything that I'm not willing to yes. do yes. or that I have not done in the past. Right, exactly. That's and, awesome. and I think setting that is really important. Now, I'm not necessarily one that's going to come, you know, barking orders or saying, get this done now, 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 now. Uh, a little more, you know, try and be, you know, try and be, Try and be building and educate, right? Um, but also try trying to lead by that example. That's right. That's right. That's that's a great answer because I think times has changed. So, what is your perspective on today's leadership? And then I'm going to ask you what's your perspective now on CPA. So, the first question is, what is your perspective on today's leadership compared to how many years you've been in your profession? Man, I've done this a long time. <laughs> you know, more than ten, more than ten, way years? way more than ten. Okay, great. So how has things changed? Even if it was 10 weeks, something you can get a perspective, I believe, yeah. on there. You can weigh in. What has changed to you or what has improved to you in your as a as a leadership? First leadership and then as your profession and CPA. So has things changed in your ways of leading since you've been in your profession over 10 years? Yeah. Yeah. I think I've I've changed some. You know, okay. for sure. And you've always got to evolve. I mean, you're yeah. evolving all, all the time for, for better or worse sometimes. Exactly. So exactly. Not always, you know, for the better. Evolution. Yeah, evolution. Yeah. Got to evolve. I believe in that. You can't be the same. <laughs> you 
can't yep. be pissed. So you got to adjust. Like, look at us now. Normally, we would have a meeting. We have a meeting set up a time, driving, like you said, 30 or 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, to totally get different. There, you know, or to lead or, or speak or whatever. So what has changed, which we just about done, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your time, Neil. What yeah. has changed over, over your field for CPA? Has things changed to you? What's your perspective, perspective on it? Yeah, I, th I think a lot has changed in the industry. You know, I've done this almost 25 years. Wow. Um, okay. You know, al almost 25. So one of the, from a leadership perspective, I, I, I think one of the things that's changed a lot is back in the day, you had a lot of very, um, at least where, I, you know, in a lot of professions, a, a lot of very in-your-face leaders that, okay. uh, hey, you've got to get this done no matter, right. no matter what. And we're, we're very right. vocal. You know, right. and you, you hear a lot of horse, a lot of horror stories about you know the right. yellings ad and everything right. else. Right. right. And I think that's really had to evolve because one, that's not always the way to get the most out of your people. That's right. Um, you know, it, it breaks down relationships. Um, and I think everyone has mellowed out a little bit more, uh, and just a little bit more. Um, what's the, maybe the best word for it's a little bit more in touch with what everyone is trying to do and feel. Right. Um, right. Right. And not that, that in your, in your face mentality anymore. That's right. So when I, today's leaders, which you know, as we speak right now, which one, which one is pushy and which one is, is more of a pull magnetized where you're inspired with. You know, I, I think it is, I, I don't think it's, I don't think the pushy one is what necessarily attracts people. Exactly. Yeah. I, so ladies I, and gentlemen, you know who we're talking about at the time, I'm just saying overall, you can tell, that's why yeah. I asked you, things have, have changed, especially since I was in the military in my time, I've been out over 20 some years now, even the generals, even the higher up have changed their methods. I think it's about growth, the way you were built at that time, you know, mm -hmm. but if you spend time and learn someone, you know, and don't just assume, you know, you can go a long way. Like right now we're building a relationship. I can feel you. I got to pull to you. I'm, I'm, I gravitize to you. Same way I feel with leadership. Don't you, you know, you don't have to push anyone to have you don't someone have to. follow you. Yeah. They'll, they'll gravitize. Like you made the example on that. Like you said, set the example. I wouldn't do, you know, I wouldn't ask you to do something that I wouldn't do, you know, boom. So yeah. what's happening now, the world is changing, which your profession too. I just wanted to make a point, ladies and gentlemen, which I appreciate you, Neil. Things has changed now where you don't have to push someone for the business, which I don't like pushy people. I'd rather get pulled in, educate me, give me time. Let me ask you a few more questions. Then sure. that's a solid, that's a solid business or a solid decision to me. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, I would totally agree. <laughs> I would totally agree because if we're not asking questions and educating, we're not finding out what's important to you. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, hey, Neil, how can they get in contact with you? I definitely need to get another episode on that. Seriously, yeah. whether it's personal or business on there, how can they get in contact? What do you have involved? Yep. So probably the, the best way to, to get in touch with us sure. um, is, to, is probably via email right now. Really? Okay. Can yep. you get a listeners and the watchers your email? And I'll make sure I put it in your description yes. when I place your yep. episode. Our, my email is N Denman, which is N D E N M A N at DenmanCPA.com. Great, great, great. All right. All right. Well, hey, well, hey, hey, Neil. I definitely appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, man. Love to have you come on too for personal development because you can tell a story of what's going on. Love to have you come and definitely we'll do that. for your CPA work also. So thanks for your time, sir. Well, you're thanks welcome. You have a good rest of your day. You too. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, as I end all uh, podcast episodes, don't condemn, don't complain because you have a choice to make a change. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us on the Nicholas Brown Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, www.nickbrowninc.com, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. 
If you like this show and you are a new real estate investor, then check out one of Nicholas's free reports called the Wholesale Dominator Report. Also located on our website, www.nickbrownie.com slash free reports. Be sure to tune in for our next episode. And remember, don't condemn, don't complain, because you have a choice to make a change. Have a great day.